Brian had a reputation for concentrating more on the artistic expression side of photography, whereas RMIT had the reputation more for the scientific and technical aspects of photography. And I was probably more interested in the more open-ended side of photography rather than just the purely technical. However, most of my schools are actually in the, on the technical side and I think that's why the artistic side appealed to me. Paul Cox was at Pran and he had a reputation as being a sort of bit of an avant-garde photographer. So that was when I first heard about Pran and I thought, oh, well, look, I'll go along there and see what's offering. To apply with the idea of becoming a student, Paul Cox was there and also Derek Lee were the other two lecturers in the department. Gordon Delar was the head of department and he looked at my folio and said, look, you've got a very good folio. I don't know why you would want to come here as a student. I would be interested in offering you a position. The reason I first got involved with photography was because my father was a journalist with a newspaper and he bought himself a camera which he which in those days was a good camera which was a Rolleiflex and he really didn't know how to use it so I started to play with it and I ended up going out with him on jobs and I would often take the photos which would subsequently appear in the newspaper. Now you must remember at this time I was only you know 15 years old in the early 70s, when I first started at Paran, there was a very positive attitude among the students. I wasn't much older than many of the students, and in fact some of them were older than me. And I think I probably learned as much from the students as they learned from me. But, you know, on the technical aspects, there was a lot of things that I was able to teach them. The staff in the photography department at Paran lacked any teaching experience, and I think that actually helped us in terms of relating to the students and relating to their work. We, we probably learnt as much from the students as they learnt from us because we were exposed to their ideas and their ways of thinking. And someone like Paul Cox and John Cato, they would always introduce music into their classes and, and get the students thinking about the feelings and the way they related to the images that they were trying to create. I think the reality in terms of the financial position of the, of the photography department, because cameras and movie cameras and lighting equipment was relatively expensive compared to some a department like the painting department, we were always struggling a little bit financially. Having said that, the, there was always just enough to get by on. Whilst working at Pran, I became interested in cinematography, although I had never touched a movie camera before going to Pran. Paul Cox was running the department and he got me to help him out on a lot of projects with the students initially. Late, later on, we started making films together and on Paul's first two major feature films, I ended up working as cameraman alongside Paul one of the advantages of being in an art school was the exposure to other departments within the college and the ability of the students to do elective in other areas in order to broaden their horizons. After John Cato died, Paul Cox and I decided that it would be worthwhile if we put together a show of his work, which we did for the Ballarat Photo Biennial. When when we decided to do it and we were talking to other people, we then decided to produce a monograph on John and his work because his work was probably under-recognised, although his work is in the Art Gallery here in Victoria, the National Gallery in Canberra and also up in the galleries in New South Wales. So John had a very interesting approach to photography and was probably instrumental in influencing a lot of the students and in their approach to landscape photography. During my time at Paran, I ended up shooting sculptures and paintings for 
other staff members at the college. And that is something that I have continued to do today, which always amazes me is that the, like 50 years later, I am still photographing paintings. The opportunity to work with other artists gives you a, a, an insight into their thinking and you, you realise the impact that all of the arts have on each other. They all intermix. After I left Pran, I joined Brian Brandt, who was a photographer in Chapel Street, and he had an, a very large advertising photography studio and a small colour lab. Over time, we managed to grow the colour lab and we ended up employing about 36 people in the lab. But then digital came along and everything changed. I think the major impact in my life was getting married and ending up with five kids. My kids have all gone into various careers. Michael, my oldest son, is into filmmaking. Uh, Cassandra works in the music industry in the UK. Patrick works in the theatre industry in the UK. Natasha is a teacher here in Melbourne. And Jacinta is a neuropsych at the Epworth Hospital here in Melbourne. It is interesting because my, my wife always, when people are asking about the kids, she always says that Jacinta and Natasha who have Real jobs have a bigger impact on people's lives than Michael, Cassandra and Patrick who all work in the arts. Also been influenced by the change in technology and also the change in size of images that are displayed. Initially images, photographic images were displayed small but over time the technology has improved Another observation I have on photography over the years is the impact that the iPhone has had on the way people see photography. And it is amazing. We will get people who will bring in images they have shot on their iPhone and they will want them blown up to one, one and a half metres in size. And given the technology that is available today, it is quite easy to do that. A lot of people don't feel the need to go to a professional photographer, inverted commas. They think, oh, I can get a shot on my iPhone and that will do the job. So for people starting out and wanting to make a career of photography, I think it is a lot harder now than it was in the 1970s. I mean, this is stupid, I know, but occasionally I do family portraits, right? I always go along and take a Hasselblad or a 35mm Canon, whatever. I will always shoot the first shots with the big camera. And then I'll say, oh, look, we'll just do some shots with the iPhone, you know, and I'll do things. Nine times out of ten, we will end up using the shots from the iPhone. 